My grandma told me a story about a demon dog in San Cristobal, and how it took a priest and almost every man with a gun in town to bring it down. She and her sisters managed to catch a glimpse of the commotion from their balcony, and how the beast kept growing in size and burning the stone it steeped on. Well apparently they heard the commotion going in the southern part of the town, some time after some men told their dad and two older brothers to bring their guns to a manor in the southern part, over a wild animal terrorizing some women. My grand-grandfather told them to bunker up, but my grand-aunt managed to sneak from the balcony, and got the other sisters to see what was happening from the second floor, they caught glimpses of a horse-sized animal engulfed in green flames, that kept charging at people as the men followed and tried to shoot it down. They chased it out of sight but my grandma said she felt sick after seeing it, almost as if it wasn't meant to be seen in her words. I never meet my grand uncles, they died before I was born, but every one of my grand aunts confirmed that they also fell ill with fever and night terrors for days after the event. The full story that happened out of sight, apparently involved a girl getting pregnant out of wedlock, and getting caught after doing a makeshift abortion. Her mother slapped her and she slapped back, to the recollection of one of the servants in that house, that's when a weird smell came into the house, and a small puppy with hollow eyes was seen in the living room. The animal made weird deep sounds instead of barks and when confronted by the servants after the mother told them to get it out of sight, it started to grow and its fur busted into green flames. This is where the accounts from people outside of my family that lived in San Cristobal get weird, either the daughter and mother faint here and get dragged to safety by an employee, or they try to run away only to find most of the door handles are scorching hot and can't get away. The beast supposedly just growls and stares as it keeps getting bigger and blazes from red to blue, the screams then prop people to call for help and get the priest close while some people grab their guns and try to get into the property. This is about the time my granddad gets told to come there armed. According to what my grandma and my grand aunts tell me, there were about 20 men, and a lot of armed servants there including my grand grandpa and my two grand uncles, the beast was holed up inside and already grew to the size of a Clydesdale, the mother and daughter stopped screaming, and that's when the town wielder used his hammer to break some fencing in the left side of the property, everyone I have talked about this confirms the left side was the one used to enter, it is told the women and servants were catatonic already and the beast kept making deep weird growls, before the men started shooting at it, they pierced it and some of its skin fell and went, caustic, spilling on the floor. The beast was reportedly unflinching until the priest started praying, and the animal recoiled in what I was told to be almost human voices. The animal tried to charge but some of the priest helpers dropped some holy water out of shock and the animal bounced back. The more the priest screamed prayers the more the animal seemed to be in pain, the men then started shooting at it again which prompted it to flee from the northern gate after all the doors in the property unlocked at the same time. Some onlookers outside of the property said the animal kept growing. People chased it out first to the north, then to San Lucidrio riverbank where it flinched at the church projected shadow, and was forced west down the river where it fell to the shots and reportedly started dissolving into a weird mass of flesh and fire, until there was nothing left. I should visit that place, there is a plot of land where the animal supposedly died and grass refuses to grow to this day. It's apparently a tourist site for some people that hear the tales, the scary part of this shit is the amount of people that don't change the story, most folk tales always get a variation but this shit always got the old locals unnerved. A girl on a Navajo reservation recounted a strange event from her childhood. Very young, around 10 or so. My parents have to go out of town with my aunt, uncle and grandmother. They say they'll be back the next day and leave us kids to look out for ourselves while they're gone. We spend the afternoon playing outside, doing normal kid stuff. Only go inside once it gets dark. 
Everyone's hanging out in the living room, when suddenly there's a knock at the door. Front door has a large window on it. And I can see someone standing out there in the porch light. It's not a person. Looks like a wolf standing up on its hind legs, but it's much taller than the door maybe eight feet tall or so. His breath is fogging up the window. Scared, I usher all the younger kids into the two bedrooms and tell them to stay away from the windows. Run back to the living room but the wolf thing is gone. Hear movement on the roof, sounds like horse hooves clopping around up there. Scared, but trying to stay calm, I build a fire in the chimney in case it's trying to get in through there. After about an hour, I go back to check on the kids. In one room they're all fast asleep. Go to check the other room but I hear something in the living room. Go out there and see one of my little cousins and she's whimpering, looking at the door. The wolf thing is back, and it's staring at my little cousin. Its eyes are glowing red. I run over and try to pull my cousin away from the door but she seems paralyzed. Her eyes look glazed over and I realize she's looking into the wolf creature's eyes. I shake her a bit, calling her name, but she won't snap out of it. I tell her to remember her family and shake her harder and eventually she kind of wakes up and starts crying. Says the creature was talking to her in her head. What was it saying? It was telling her to open the door and let it in. As she's talking she glances over at the door and I see her eyes glaze over again. I realize the creature must be hypnotizing her, or something. Keeping my eyes averted from the door, I shake my cousin again calling her name and talking to her until she finally snaps out of it. Then the wolf creature starts scratching at the door and pounding on the window. It could easily break that window but for some reason it won't. I walk my crying cousin over to her room and tell her to try and sleep, and to stay away from the windows. The wolf creature keeps scratching at the door, sometimes it climbs on the roof. I keep the fire burning all night and make sure to never look directly into the wolf's eyes. This goes on until morning. Just as light is breaking, the creature takes off into the woods like it's scared. Grandmother and parents come back later in the day but we don't mention what happened, I didn't think they'd believe us. It was later in the day when some of us girls were sitting in the living room that I noticed my grandmother staring at us with a strange grin on her face. My cousin noticed it too, said it felt evil. She kept grinning and staring at us with a dark look in her eyes. For some reason I think that my grandmother had something to do with that creature. Alright this one happened this past spring semester. Two buddies and I decide to drive from northern slash central Florida down to Key West for the weekend. Shit's nice, longish drive but it's okay. Spend weekend in Key West doing shit like fishing and chillin' at the beach, weekend ends. On drive back up. We're taking turns driving, friend one is tired as shit but took the first shift anyways. I take over driving when it gets dark. Friend one hops in back to catch some sleep while friend two stays in passenger seat. Driving for a few hours at night and decide to pull over for some gas and food at a shitty, poorly light gas station. Ask sleepy friend one if he wants anything. No response past the fuck out dot jpeg all right cool guard the car sport get snacks fuck yes peach rings and an arnold palmer notice some dick put nails under my tires so that when i drove off it'd go into my tires the fuck cashier didn't see shit neither did we place is light like shit anyways remove it bail Head off back on the road. And five minutes or so later remember friend one is in back when he catches my eye in the rear view, look back in rear view on see friend one put on his hoodie he had in the back with him, closed up the hood part and moved over to the right side. So much for being asleep, moving around and shit, the hell you think this is? Ask if he saw anyone fuck with the car. 
he doesn't talk, he just nods, no. Make snide comment about Sleeping Beauty, should have came with us inside and got some deodorant he smells like shit, fucking got him. We all smelled, we didn't shower that day after fishing. Driving down sketchy as hell road with woods on both sides a few minutes, really dark now. See someone standing in the road, move bitch. Betamax. Friend one leans forward a little, awake now bitch. Swerve out of the way of them, they don't move. Suddenly I can see people in the fricking trees and foliage on both sides, like a goddamn ambush. Oh fuck the hills have eyes. Fucking gun it, thank god I spotted the nails under the tires. Couldn't make out any of their faces, just their shapes, too dark for my shitty headlights. Hour or so goes by, friend two and I both freaking the fuck out with only a few words spoken between each other, friend one back asleep, not talking. We see another car drive by not long later, their lights on. As they pass, I look in my side mirror. Passing car shines through my side windows as it goes, in the side mirror I see friend one's face asleep up against the window on my left side directly behind me. Weren't you? Look in rear view, see he's still in the hoodie in the right seat. No. Nope. Slam on brakes, start screaming, friend two, WTF what what, then he looks back and makes the realization there's two people now in the back seat. Real friend one is actually finally awake now dazed and confused. Hod figure slams open the car door and sprints off into the woods. Hit the gas, all three of us screaming incoherently at each other what the fuck what the fuck. Friend one says he woke up when we were at the gas station right after friend two got in the back with me and put on my hoodie, next to me while you were still in the gas station. Someone had been in our car for the past one to two hours that we didn't know. I never saw bro's hoodie ever again. We talk about how we almost got trapped and eaten by cannibals in central Florida all the time, try to make it into a joke. The humor helps, but that shit wasn't funny. I told this story in a thread I posted yesterday, but I'll post it again. Before I post my personal story, I need to fill you in on the legend. So strap yourselves in slash x slash. This is the Legend of the Lost Lights. Chapter 1 Part 1, The Mountain It all starts off in the mid-1800s. An expeditionary force of 25 men go exploring in the mountain ranges of BC, looking for suitable places to start a mine. They hike up a mountain and camp there for the night. That night when one of them gets up to go relieve their bowels and trips and hurts their leg in the dark. In the morning it is decided that twelve men will help the injured man down the mountain and back to civilization while the rest of them, twelve, continue on ahead. So the group splits up. They hiked until the evening. One of the men noticed it had gotten considerably colder. It then started to snow slightly only minutes later. He expressed his concern that they might get snowed over in the night. The others laughed it off. They joked and teased about him being scared. Part 2, The Storm As the evening turned into twilight, it got colder and colder, the snow got heavier and heavier. They had gone a ways up the mountain, so it was a difficult and deadly situation if the storm got worse. The snow showed signs of not letting up. In fact, it was surly to become a monster storm. The twelve men faced a tough situation. They needed to get back down the mountain, or else they would freeze to death. They left their tents and took what was needed. They started back down the mountain in the raging storm. They each lit their oil lamps as they headed down. Because of the blizzard that ensued, they could hardly see the light of the man in front of them. The man who had noted the snow earlier, Jacob White, had lost sight of the lanterns, in fact, all of them seemed to have. They walked around aimlessly on the mountain, calling out, 
trying to find each other. Just when it couldn't get any worse, the wind became even stronger. Jacob knew he had to get down the mountain or he would die there. He stopped trying to find the others and went with the slope, slowly making his way down. He managed to get down the slope and to the base. Part 3, The Lights Jacob ran to find the thirteen men that were headed back. To get help in rescuing his comrades. But he could not go on any further, the storm had spread to the bottom and across the valley. He found a nearby cave where he would spend the night. As the night progressed, he watched the lights of his fellow expeditionaries wander endlessly across the mountain in the hellish snowstorm. Throughout the night he watched them. The first light went out and disappeared at around midnight. Others followed in the next hours. One by one, they extinguished. Jacob hoped, prayed, that at least one light would last the night. The last one went out three hours from the first. All hope was lost. In the morning, when the storm cleared Jacob headed further into the valley to find the thirteen men that had gone back earlier yesterday. When he found them, there was only two left alive. The rest had died in the storm that swept down from the mountain and into the valley. The men and Jacob exchanged stories. The men told Jacob that they had seen the wandering lights up on the mountain side. The two men only found out in the morning that eleven men had died in the night from the cold. Part 4, The Dead Three weeks later, an expeditionary force of twenty men including Jacob, returned to recover anything of those who had died in the storm. They found the remains of the eleven men in the valley easily enough. They recovered their personal effects and what little bone they could find to bring back to their families. There was not much left of them from the wildlife picking at them. The bodies of the men who died up on the mountain however, they found none, no sign of them. Gone without a trace. They searched until dusk. Then, the air got colder. Light snow began to fall down. Just like on the night Jacob's comrades met their end. They hightailed it down the mountain and into the valley. They made it into the middle of the valley and made camp for the night. Then storm came down from the mountain and into the valley just like last time. Just like the night when Jacob lost his comrades. It got colder and colder in the valley, as the storm continued to barrel down from the mountain. Part 5, The Lost That night, Jacob and the men saw something that they could not quite believe. They saw lights wandering upon the blizzarding mountainside. They watched from their individual tents throughout the night, as one by one the wandering lights went out. Jacob knew that it must be the spirits of his friends. Jacob wondered why he only saw ten lights when it was eleven of his friends that disappeared up on the mountainside. Had one survived? Could one of his friends still be alive? Somewhere, lost out there in the wilderness? Where was the lost light up on the high? Answers came in the morning. Answers of where the lost light went. When Jacob awoke in the morning, the storm had cleared. Jacob and the nine other men stepped out of their tents. Nine other men. Ten men had died from the cold that night. They must have died one by one in the night, succumbing to the cold. One by one, the ten men's lives, snuffed out by the cold. Snuffed out like the ten lights up on the mountainside. Chapter 2 Part 1 And now slash x slash it is time to share my personal experience with the lost lights. Be me. 35 Have three teenage boys. Decide to go hiking with my sons, my buddy, and his two sons. We drive out to the edge of the wilderness at 4 a.m., park the car and start hiking at 4.30. We hike all day, only stopping at noon shortly for a quick lunch. We are walking at a decent pace. We reach the middle of a valley in the evening. We decide to camp there for the night. We ate a quick dinner and everyone went to sleep pretty quick after that from being tired from the hiking. 
everyone went to bed but me. I decided to stay up and drink some beers and chillax in a fold-up chair I brought. I sat there staring at the sun that just set behind the mountain range. It got pretty cold after the sun set. Put on my jacket. Then, the fireflies came out. They danced slowly across the shape of the mountain. These fireflies were pretty weird. They didn't leave the shape of the mountain, and they didn't flash like normal fireflies. Then it hits me. Holy shit to fuck dot jpg. Immediately get the fuck up and wake everyone. Part 2 Tell them to pack their shit, and we gotta move now. My buddy asks, what's wrong? What happened? Me, I saw them. Buddy, saw what? Me, the lost lights. Buddy looks over my shoulder and sees the lights on the mountainside. He then notices how cold it has gotten. Buddy rushes to pack everything up with the kids. We hike back as fast as we can. The boys had overheard what me and my buddy were saying. Dad, what is the lost lights? Why are we leaving right now? Can't we leave in the morning? No I said, and I proceeded to tell them the story of the lost lights while hiking back. At around 2.30 am we managed to get back to the car, and we hightailed it out of there. I drop my buddy off and me and my kids go home. I woke up at noon. Found out from the weather station there was a huge snowstorm that swept the valley we were in last night. Here comes the really scary part slash x slash. I saw seven lights up on the mountain side. There were seven of us on the trip. And that slash x slash is my experience with the lost lights. Seen too much weird shit in the Uhoris and Blue Ridge to not believe in something. There's definitely some spooky stuff out there but we'll never see it on a mass scale. Skinwalkers were a big thing out west. Goat slash dog men and shapeshifters are definitely out there in some more secluded areas of the US and world. Phone posting so sorry if bad typing. Visit Blue Ridge a bunch last few years. Up around Sparta. Grandpa died, left my uncle his cabin in his four acres of 300-year-old farmland. We more or less own the mountain it's on, since no one else lives there year-round, all other houses are vacation houses or hunting cabins. Camp out on the mountain a bunch. Hunt, trap, bushcraft etc. Always weird shit going down. Motion lights flicker on in the middle of winter with no tracks slash unidentifiable tracks. Weird screeching from the hills. Shuffling noises coming from the front porch. Always find scratches way high up on trees like someone gashed the tree with a bumper. Large and sharp hill right next to main road leading into driveway with incredibly steep angle going up a few hundred feet. Always see weird gangly things running around on crest of hill. Super tall. Not like NBA player tall, I'm talking 8 to 12 feet tall, their heads hit low branches. Remember finding a deer carcass cleaved in half sitting on the bank of the stream a couple hundred yards from the property. Literally in half like some kind of giant cleaver took it down. Specifically one time I was working outside late at night. Putrid garbage smell washes over me. No neighbors so no garbage day anytime soon. Peek around garage and up the hill behind the property. Some kind of thing is just staring me down from the tree line. Looks like someone starved a golden retriever then proceeded to stretch its limbs until it stood upright on backwards legs. Snout slash mouth peeled back showing teeth and flaps of skin. Thing stares me down until I flip on a mag light around the corner and it bounds off into the pines. Don't go looking for what you ain't prepared to find fellas. Went camping with friends a bunch in New Horries. Close to where I live so ease of access. Big place to camp too, could literally get lost. Lots of spooky shit still. Go camping a lot late October early November when leaves fall. 
constantly hear crunching and skittering in the leaves when trying to sleep. No like squirrels playing but big swish 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 sounds like something dragging its feet. Camping by lake one night. Get settles in hammock. Kerplunk.mp3 Something massive was just thrown into the lake. Check where the ripples lead and it's a fuck huge log from the trails. Even for how tall I am I barely think I could drag it with me. Driving our Avuhori late on night. Gave up on camping due to rain. Driving out real slow so some dumbass tree branch doesn't shatter my windshield. Headlights hit something. Massively tall. Lanky as hell. Hunched over just outside tree line. Looks like an emaciated gorilla. Turns to me. Mouth is all torn to shreds. Eyes are like that glossy black look, almost like pool balls. Thing slowly shuffles for my truck. Tear ass down road without a thought. See it standing in the road in my rear view. Camping again on river bank in small divot. Can see across to other side. Not paying attention really, trying to cook over fire. Something shuffle out of the tree line. Can barely see shit in the moonlight. Tall but hunched over, legs are kinda buckled under itself. Slowly bear crawls over to bank of river. Out in the moonlight so I can see it better. Has weird situation going on with its body. Legs are gangly and thin, upper body is wide and semi-muscular. Body is a sickly grey. Head has awkward horns coming out of the top. Has to crawl everywhere. Crawls up and down the bank for a few seconds. Fire pops. It immediately looked over to me. Kicks up rocks as it crawls back into the pines. Grab gun, don't sleep that night. 